and welcome to worship today. Today, as we begin our weekly journey forward, we get to follow Christ, and we get to do that with joy today. Join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, we do thank you for this wonderful day and for these wonderful folks who have gathered here at the church and as at home. We are together community, gathered to worship you. We thank you for this opportunity that you made by going to the cross for us and coming out of the grave victorious. And all you ask is that we follow you. Follow after you in your path and in your ways. Help us today to see that path ahead and to feel your guidance. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Call to worship this morning is from Psalms chapter 26, verses 1 through 8. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes and I walk with faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar. O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Welcome. Good to see all of you again once again this morning. It's not quite as bright as it has been or as warm, and thank goodness for that. We thank you for all of your prayers, and we hope that you will continue to pray for our community, for our nation, and for this evil pandemic and for this church. We invite everyone to come together Sunday on September 13th. Our service will start at 11 a.m. So don't forget to change and recognize 11 a.m. will be the starting time, September 13th. Sunday school will also begin that day. We're still looking for a few teachers so if any of you or know of someone that would like to be a Sunday school teacher, I believe Fran is trying to uh, work that out so that uh, they can alternate and still um, attend church from time to time. So please see Fran. Uh, preschool is filling up. So if you know or know of someone that needs to get their youngster enrolled, please have them contact the church office ASAP. Classes start September 8th. We are asking for special prayers for Roger Abel as he recovers from his recent surgery. Remember Roger and his wife were uh, members here, and they now live out in the sunshine state of California. Uh, we continue to stream and post our services of our church to our church website. 
YouTube channel and Facebook page. So um, let others that you know of that uh, aren't able to attend to make sure that they check those out. Please remember to donate to our local food pantry for the many in need of help in our community. A cart is available out in the lobby area. So uh, if you are able to do so, please add to the cart. If you are in need of prayers or assistance, please contact our church office. We are here for you. We welcome and continually pray for all of you, our community and our country. Blessings to all. Again, if you pull out your insert, you'll see that the, the names of those that we're lifting up are listed in there, and we'll be praying for those today, as well as those that are, that are unspoken. Again, all of the stuff that, we, that Dwayne's talked about is in here, but we do want to talk about the fact that starting next week, our kids are planning to go back to in-person school, some of them. So let's keep our kids in prayer and the teachers. And this is a big change for, for us to get back into what we would call, quote-unquote, normal, whatever that is, is normal. We do have a lot to be thankful for. So as we go in prayer and as we pray for these names and, the, and many other situations, let's focus on spending that moment at the feet of our Savior. Great and awesome God, as we sit in your presence today and we lift up the names of those that we care about and we lift up the situations in our lives that have brought us pain or bring us joy, whatever it is, we bring them to you. Because we know through faith that we give them to you. It'll be okay. It may not be what we want, but it will be what we need because you are what we need. And so, Lord, in these situations, we ask that you would extend grace through us. Help us to be your church, to be your hands and feet, to be the people that help answer prayers through your guidance. Help us to follow you each and every day. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Our first reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, preserve in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, 
Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will help burn, heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome with e by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord, but wow. Those are some tough words. Hard to live by. Thank you. morning. There's a little story behind this song I'm going to sing. I don't feel no ways tired. There was an old, old lady uh, who had inspired uh, Reverend uh, James Cleveland to sing the song uh, back in 1978. Uh, this, this woman was exhausted, bone weary. Her feet were swollen. Her back ached. She was short of breath. She had been walking a long and dusty road, filled with potholes and fallen branches. She had a hard life, the kind of life where you get up every morning knowing that people are going to hate you and demean you and mistreat you just because of who you are. How do you think that walk, that road day by day, how do you walk that road day by day year after year, decade after decade. For this woman, the answer was God, her protector, her redeemer, her sanctifier, her liberator. And she said these words, I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I start it from nobody told me that the road would be easy I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me I don't feel no ways tired I come too far from where I started from, oh Lord. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Now, I don't know about you today, but I've been running for Jesus a long time. And there's something about walking with him, hallelujah. Every day gets sweeter than the day before. And for some reason, I don't mind the pitfalls. Because every time I get one, he's right there. And I can say, just like that old mother said that night, I don't feel no waste time. I come too far from where I started from, oh Lord. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I've been sick, but God brought me. I've been in trouble, and God brought me. Oh, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I've been trembling. I've been lonely. Oh, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. So just remember, don't believe 
He brought you this far to leave you. So I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Claude. And as our theme continues, as we sang, as we came in, here I am, Lord, and we hear the songs and the scriptures that are all pointing about a way of following Jesus, a way of moving in that direction. If you would join me in, in reading Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose them, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? The Son of Man is to come with his angels into the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there is some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, we do ask that you would knit together the rest of this story, this final passage in Matthew 16, that you would bring it all together for us. Help us to see the big picture. Help us to internalize your message. Let us have fun with your scripture today as we celebrate it and as we bring it full circle. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, we did pray and ask God to let us have fun with the scripture today. Because this is a fun scripture. This is not an easy scripture, but it is a fun scripture. Why? Because it really does tell us what we need to do. And as a simple man, I need that. I need people to just talk straight, right? We just need to cut right to the chase and get right down to the moral of the story. Let's not leave room for interpretation. Let's just get down to it. Who likes that? Who likes to just be told this is what it is? I have a wife who's good at that. Not in a bad way, but she's very clear and to the point, right? And I need that. That's probably what attracted me to her in the first place is I'm good at taking orders. She's good at giving them. It works, right? It works. And so she's a blessing to me, and she has shown me that being short and to the point is good, not necessarily if you're a preacher. You like to talk, but sometimes you can do it too much. Peter ran into that in this scripture, Last week we just talked about how Peter was celebrated as the rock, was he not? He had burst out with the, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, you are all that. And Jesus says what? You are the rock for which I will build my church. Yay! The next set of verses where you find Peter opening his mouth and inserting his foot. We see Peter doing what Peter does and what Ed does and what probably some of you do. We try to tell Jesus what's best. Have any of us ever tried to do that? Has any of us ever tried to say, well, Jesus, I get it. You've got a pretty good idea, but have you ever met me? I have a better one. I know you're Jesus, but I'm Ed. Let me introduce myself. Peter does that to Jesus in this passage. Jesus is literally breaking it down for them. And it says right here, from this time on, from the minute they realized he was the Messiah, he began to teach them that he must die and come out of the grave. This is the holy plan. This is it. And what does Peter do? Just what we would do. Grab Jesus by the arm, pull him aside, and say, hey, wait a minute, that's not a good plan. I don't like that plan. Let's get a new plan. I know you're Jesus, and you're holy, and you're from God, but have you thought about this plan? 
and he rebukes Jesus. Can you believe it? He was just celebrated as the rock, in tune with the Almighty. And now Jesus is not calling him a rock, but a stumbling block. You're no rock at all. You're a stumbling block in the road, Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Ouch. I don't think I would have wanted to have been Peter in that moment, would you? Walking along and having a comment made like that. He wasn't saying that that Peter was inherently evil. What he was saying was Peter was tempting him. Don't tempt me, he says. This is the plan. I have to go to Jerusalem. These things have to happen. I have to suffer. I will die and I will be raised. And he says this to Peter privately because Peter says it to him privately. It says he pulled him aside, which is always good. If you've got some rebuking to do, it's probably best to rebuke it privately. Have you ever been rebuked? Have you ever rebuked somebody? It's uncomfortable. It can be. And so Peter does the right thing, I think, and he pulls Jesus aside and says to him privately, you know, hey, it's not a really good idea. This is a bad plan. Jesus tells him he's wrong. And then he says this to the entire group. And I think this is something that most of us do. We, we know that, that Peter's probably speaking for the group. And so he addresses the entire group. And here's what he says. If any of you want to be my followers, you have to do this. And there's where it becomes simple. Let them deny themselves, take up your cross, and follow me. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Deny yourself. Mm. Humans have shown over the years we're not very good at that. We do not do well in denying ourselves much of anything. That's why Jesus said it. If it was easy to follow all the time, then really everybody would do it, wouldn't they? Yeah, but it does take some work to be a Christian. It's not always easy. And so Jesus says, focus on these three things, and you'll get there. Deny yourself. What does that mean? Those things that Dwayne read that were tough to hear, right? We have to live by those rules in Romans. Those are the things. Deny those urges. Deny those human thoughts. Deny the, the, the thoughts of gossip. Deny those thoughts. Those self-defeating and destructive things that we think about. Deny yourself those. Deny yourself those things that would pull you away from God. Seems pretty good. That's good advice. Deny those things. Focus on the things of God. And then we are to take up our cross. Jesus again foreshadowing to the fact that he will eventually take a cross. Ed, don't put your hands in your pockets. Tim's going to taser me if I do that again. So, we don't like standing there either. Time. Kirk. That's all right. I'll get on another one. We'll try anyway to get back to where we were about taking up our cross. I think that's where we were. were This thing doesn't want me to take up my cross. So here we go. We have to deny ourselves and we're going to take up God. Now we'll see how good my memory is. Can we get back on track? And I think we can. Because taking up our cross is a little bit of a foreshadow, isn't it? It's a little bit of telling the disciples that eventually there's going to be something dramatic that's going to happen. Jesus ended up having to pick up a literal cross, carry it to a death. And he's telling them, you're going to have to pick up your cross. Now, is he meaning that we need to walk around with a wooden two-by-four taped to us all the time? No, he's not. He's not. But what he's saying is we all have burdens to bear, don't we? Jesus' burden was our sins, was our lives at stake. 
He bared that burden on his cross. Those were the three by five cards, if you will, nailed to his cross. We all have three by five cards that we have nailed to our cross that we have to bear each and every day. Good things, bad things, painful things, all kinds of things that make us not want to move forward. Any of the things that are nailed to your cross make you want to just stay put and quit? Every day, Jesus says, we need to pick up that cross. Trust in me and follow. Follow me. And watch what happens. Follow me. How do we follow him? You know what? I'm not touching that thing. Because I want to walk around, but I'm frozen right now with this thing. So, we have to remember that. We have to remember that when we take up our cross and we follow him, that's where it ends. Following him. But we're not good at following as humans. Humans like to bash their own trail. We like to do our own thing. And he says, well, what benefit is that if you gain the entire world and you lose your life? Oh, boy, here we come. Mute it. It's okay. You can stop. All right, how's this? Is this better? Can we? There's no popping and cracking. Are we good? All right. Man, I feel like it, I could bust into some karaoke right now. <laughs> but that's not the kind of venue that we're in. Right? This is a different place. So here we are. We're going to wrap this thing up with the Son of Man has come into his glory. Right? He's telling them the entire story. Right up until the end. Right? He tells them the beginning that he's going to have to suffer. He tells them the middle that it's going to be even worse than you think. I'm going to die, but then I'm going to be raised. He tells them the entire story about how they're going to see his glory. They're going to watch and see. Just follow me. Have a little faith, he says. Deny yourself and pick up your cross. We have come together Sunday coming up here in a few weeks. An opportunity for us to gather together and reunite and connect. And for some of us, it means that we're going to have to pick up our cross and journey a little bit. Feel that weight on the shoulders just a tad bit. We're going to have to break some old habits that maybe we've created during this COVID pandemic. And it's gotten real comfortable to stay home on Sunday. It's gotten real comfortable to sleep in. We've developed habits. We need to develop some new ones. Jesus says to follow him. And to follow him requires us to set some new habits. To deny ourselves, maybe, and, and do some things differently. Now, I said last, back in, during Lent, that I had given up donuts. You remember that? I still have not. And I am actually able to tuck my shirt in. Today, I mean, this is a celebration. I, I was going to, Don said I had to reintroduce myself because I have a tie and a tucked in shirt. And that I probably should start over and say, hey, welcome to this worship. I'm Ed Milam, if you don't know me. But it feels good to be disciplined. What? It does. And Jesus is saying, it's not that hard. Just have a little self-discipline and follow me. And it'll be okay. And maybe someday you'll get to tuck your shirt in too. If you'll just follow, and you'll just listen, and you'll just not make it so hard, right? We want to complicate Christianity and make it what it isn't. And Jesus here is just simply telling us, if we gain the whole world but we lose our eternity, what's the point? That's not the point. The point is to love God, love others, and receive our eternity with God. Will you join me in prayer? as we close this passage. Almighty God, we do thank you for Matthew 16, for the fact that you took this group of people, put them under your wing with all of their human frailties and all of their problems, and you loved on them, and you taught them so that they could teach others, and you teach us so that we can teach others. Almighty God, help us to follow you. Help us to be disciples with all of our flaws, but we're willing every day to hoist that cross up, deny our own self, and follow the path that you would have for us. 
Not an easy task, but a worthwhile one. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we prepare to go, we have an opportunity to respond to the Holy Spirit. Right? Each and every time we pray, each and every time we have worship, we have an opportunity to respond. And we respond in several ways. One of the ways we respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit is through ministry, through service. We actually go do something. Right? We respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit through prayer, which prompts us to say, okay, you know what, this is laid on my heart. Some of you have felt that, and you pray for it. Right? The, one of the other ways we respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit is through giving, right? through our tithes and through our offerings. Right? We, the Spirit prompts us and says, hey, we need to do this. We need to do this. Right? So uh, through our prayers, through our giving, through our ministries, and through just being together. Those are ways we respond to the Holy Spirit. And so today, as we receive our offering as we go out, let us pray a blessing over that today. Almighty God, as we respond to the moving of the Holy Spirit today, help us to sense what it is you're calling us to do. Are you calling us to give? Are you calling us to serve? Are you calling us to teach? Whatever it is, Lord, help us to lay it in your offering to give it to you, knowing that you will bless it. Bless this offering and bless each giver. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand as I, we do the benediction and our final song? Lord, send us out of here excited about being Christian. Exciting about being a Christ follower. Help us to follow you well. And we know, Lord, when it gets tough, we will feel your strength. So give us the confidence to know that we are your people and bless us with your strength as we go. Help us now to go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Ciao.